Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Sipping Soil today. I have my guest, Nikki Figs. She's a licensed social worker and she's joining me in the garden today. So we're gonna have a conversation about gardening and therapy. And so today we're gonna harvest some calyces from the Jamaican sorrel plant. It is a member of the hibiscus family and it makes a wonderful tea. Um, it's full of antioxidants. I know it's also sometimes used as a hotty toddy for when people are sick. And overall, it's a really great festive Christmas drink. Um, so without further ado, we're going to cut some of the calyxes off because it's the best for the plant. And I'll talk to you later in another episode about how to save the seeds. If you wanna buy seeds, you can check out my Etsy store. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So Nikki, all you have to do is just cut at the base of the sore and they should come off pretty easily. Okay. So Nikki, can you tell us a little bit about how much you like gardening or don't like gardening? So I do, I like gardening. I would consider myself something like a baby gardener. So I'm pretty new to it. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be definitely be more consistent. But in my head, I have this huge garden. Um, like the movie baby boy <laughs> that's me in my head now in reality it looks nothing like that but i'm gonna get there one day so what is your favorite part about gardening um actually i like the process so and that's pretty interesting because i'm really impatient but i like the process of planting my own things growing and harvesting my own food I really like that. I like being outside, um, getting some fresh air, and just kind of doing my own thing at my home. So it's very simple you say the process because I think I'm pretty impatient too. I think anybody who knows me really well would say that I don't have good patience, but I really enjoy the process of gardening um, because it is a slow process. Like it takes a while to plant something for it to germinate, grow these little itty bitty flowers, um, and then kind of have a fruit or something to harvest. For this plant in particular, I planted this plant maybe three months ago. Oh, that's and pretty when good. I started, it was about yay big, maybe two or three inches. And I wasn't even sure if I had put it in the gr a great place to get good sunlight. Um, but here we are, we're finally mm -hmm. harvesting. And I wish there was some bloom so that you could see the flower. The flowers are a pale pink okay, I see. and they're really 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 pretty um, but even the calyxes the part that we're cutting off it's eye-catching mm -hmm. so if I were to go home mm -hmm. and plant these seeds like would they make it through the winter the hurricane season they won't good they question won't. so this is a plant that loves heat okay. so if you want to plant and I'm gonna give you some seeds when you leave you would plant it in the spring so start in the spring yeah because they like the sun and the heat. They love the heat because again this is a Caribbean plant. Oh, yes. So it's an annual here. We're in zone 9a in Florida so it's an annual here but in the Caribbean it's a perennial. So basically a perennial just means that it um, it lives year after year. It comes back. So even if it dies back a little mm -hmm. it comes back year after year. But here that would not be the case. It, wouldn't be the case. it gets too cold. The um, only other thing I would say is if you have a plant and you want to save the seeds don't harvest everything let a couple dry on the plant and then you'll have seeds for the following year we've harvested all of our uh, sorrel calyx seeds and these are all the ingredients and supplies that we're going to use to make our tea so first we're going to wash them so I have a bowl of water and another bowl that we're going to put them in we have some cinnamon sticks some fresh ginger, we have some Jamaican rum, we have some orange, we're going to use the peel of the orange. This is going to be our container that we put them in, and this is how we're going to de-seed them. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is actually rinse them off. So Nikki, can you talk a little bit about your journey um, into writing your book. So the title of your book, what is the book about and what made you want to do the book? 
The book is actually a journal and it is for people who deal with anxiety. And so I believe in general, everybody deals with anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the level of anxiety that you may have, how it impacts your life. That is the difference maker. So, of course, um, the pandemic mm -hmm. only enhanced that. And I felt like everybody may not be open to therapy, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And a journal is a way for them or people to kind of document their journey. Um, in the journal, there are some coping skills that you can use when you feel your anxiety triggers are being increased or you feel like your anxiety is not easily managed as it was before. Um, you're able to kind of write your thoughts and feelings and you're also able to examine what's causing the anxiety, um, how to either negate those thoughts or change your thought pattern so that you can change the way that you feel mm -hmm. and all of your journey will be documented. Now, something that I do, so some people prefer to write directly mm -hmm. in the journal, mm -hmm. which is always an option. But for me, when I have journals with prompts, I write in a blank journal. Okay. And the reason why is because I may want to use it again That's in the future. That's such a good idea. So I haven't already written in it. Um, it's so funny that you say that. So I'm old school. I know a lot of people like digital journals now mm -hmm. or just digital books, but I like to write and mm -hmm. highlight. But at the same time, it's like I'm hesitant to because I like to go back and have a fresh page or go back and see something with a new perspective. Right. Um, so that's a good idea. So if you guys didn't catch that, I'm going to say it again. Um, if you get her book, it's a good idea to possibly do the journaling in a separate book. So that you can reuse the book um, and kind of see your development mm -hmm. over time from one year to another year. Um, so I really, really like that tip. So you mentioned the pandemic. I'm just curious, was the pandemic uh, inspiration to do the book or was this something that you were planning on doing anyway and the pandemic kind of gave you time to get your thoughts together? Writing a book is a special craft. It, it takes a lot of time. It does. And through my journey as a therapist mm -hmm. and working with different people, adults and children, I figure maybe a traditional book as far as like telling a story mm -hmm. is not where I'm at right gotcha. now, mm -hmm. but a journal that can help people um, along the journey mm -hmm. was more of my speed. And so, of course, the pandemic freed up a lot of time um, to do it ideally. But, you know, I have two small kids. Um, one being a baby and so the time was there but it really wasn't there because kids of course you know they they require your time and your attention so yeah. I was I was still able to kind of work around that mm -hmm. and create the journal so there's two things you guys one my eyes if you're paying attention kept going to her nails so they can put your, <laughs> put your nails in the camera so they can see what I'm looking at do y'all see that those are nice. Thank you. Um, I don't, y'all know I don't do my nails because I'm in the dirt too much. But if I did, I'd get that. That is really, really nice. Thank you. So the next thing I'm going to do, you guys, really quick is rinse these off because if you didn't see, I just took them out of the package just so that you know what they are. These are reusable metal milkshake straws. We're going to use these to DC the calyxes. We're going to take these and you're going to take one of the calyxes. You just want to poke it through the bottom, kind of twist it, push it all the way through. Yay! And we got a seed pod. So I'm going to save the seed pods and we'll discuss those in a separate episode. Nikki, uh, we talked a little bit, but not directly about the pandemic. So I realized I've been gardening for about five years and I've gotten bigger and bigger each year and I do more and more each year. But I realized the pandemic, there was an explosion of gardening. Um, but I also realized with the pandemic, there was an explosion of mental health awareness. Can you talk a little bit maybe about mental health, um, specifically as it relates to maybe African-American women in the pandemic? And I can tell you my perspective on that, and then you can give me a professional okay. perspective. Um, as a working mom at the beginning of the pandemic, who had to work at home with my kids that I love, I was losing my mind. I was literally um, lost at how, I don't know how many women who are watching maybe at stay at home moms or work at home, because work at home moms is a thing as well. 
it's a hard juggle to do and to stay balanced. Mm -hmm. um, and if I didn't need therapy before, I definitely need th <laughs> needed therapy during the pandemic. So I'm just curious, did you see any specific trends related to therapy in the pandemic? Well, absolutely. I think just in general, it was almost like an explosion. Mm -hmm. um, everybody suddenly was aware of their mental health needs. Mm -hmm. And it seems like simultaneously these companies were aware of the necessity for them to be more flexible mm -hmm. and to kind of be aware of how mental health impacts their employees. Really, I, I think it was how mental health Im impacts their bottom line, mm -hmm. but indirectly that was how it affects their employees. Mm -hmm. And so it was an explosion. It was a lot of people looking for services. And um, specifically for black women, the numbers were heightened. Mm -hmm. um, I experienced a lot of people finally deciding to use their EAP program. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people deciding that now was the time for them to reach out and get the help that they needed. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, that's something that I welcome. I absolutely was pleased that that was the case because the services are there, you know, and it's better to go ahead and be proactive mm -hmm. and, and get what we need to make it through this pandemic with our minds intact. Yes, absolutely. Um, so gardening for me is therapeutic. Like I, I, people who know me and watch my social media have heard me say that before. And it's really true. Um, it's therapeutic in and of itself for me. It's a form of self-care, but it's also a form of um, kind of decompressing and getting out some, exerting some energy that I need to get out in a healthy way. Um, and it's also a form of exercise, which I also think is a, a form of self-care that people don't think of enough. Can you talk a little bit about like what does self-care really mean and what does self-care look like? So self-care is my specialty like mm -hmm. I firmly believe in self-care um, especially as mothers and women we do a lot whether you are a single mom whether you're a married mom it's a lot and we give and we give and we give even when we have nothing left to give and self-care is just it's 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 important there's no way to really make it mm -hmm. without investing in yourself through self-care so it's really important to me um, and self-care looks different for mm -hmm. everybody. So a lot of people, you know, go get their hair done. Or for me, I keep my nails done. And people are like, oh, that's self-care. Honey, that is not self-care. That's maintenance for me. Mm -hmm. Now, for some people, mm -hmm. it might be self-care. But mm -hmm. I enjoy having my hair done. Mm -hmm. I enjoy having my nails done. But I don't enjoy going to do those gotcha. things. So self-care looks different for everybody. Mm hmm um, and practically anything can be self-care. Now, personally, for me, I enjoy peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. So sitting in a room with nothing on where I'm kind of able to gather my thoughts mm -hmm. um, is very, that's self-care for me. It's, I mm -hmm. have opportunities to reflect or just opportunities to simply just be and do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, that, that replenishes my energy and fills my cup. Gotcha. Um, I enjoy reading. I love to read. I'm in several reading groups on mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, I have close relationships with some authors and reading is just, that's my thing. And so that is self care for me. Mm -hmm. So really it's just identifying what that looks like to you as an individual mm -hmm. and then actually being intentional mm -hmm. about making the time to engage in those activities like self care at this point is non-negotiable. And I love that you say that. You said two things. One, make the time to be intentional. Um, Cause I think being a mom, being a wife, mm -hmm. being an employee, being a daughter, being a sister, all these things take time. So you have to make the time and be intentional about your self care. Cause you can't give from an empty cup. Um, and I think being a mom and wearing all those hats and playing all those roles, we don't take the time to think about what we need um, to make sure that we're okay, that we are whole, mm -hmm. that we are well, that we have enough to give. 
Um, Because if you give, 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 you're going to be empty. Right. And you have to replenish yourself. And so um, I thank you for that. I think we got them all done. Mm -hmm. Um, And you did a good job. Thank Thank you. you. I was struggling for a little bit at first, but I I, I figured it out. You did. And so I hope you guys can see these seed pods. I'm going to save these. And um, if you want to buy some seeds, again, they will be for sale on my store. So you can try your own um, next year. And I'll talk about in a separate video how to save the seeds and how to dry because we're going to make these fresh, but how to dry these so that you have them for tea whenever you want to have them. So the next thing I'm going to do is just rinse them and put all of our ingredients in this nice clear bottle so that we can see it kind of... Um, marinade or stew that ain't the word I'm looking for. oh brew brew or steep that's the, that's word. the word steep <laughs> so um it'll be pretty cool when we watch that happen so we're gonna take a pause you guys all right guys we're back the first thing I'm gonna do is skin some of this orange peel and put it into our teacup and again this is an abbreviated version I know if all my Caribbean sisters and brothers are watching this, they're like, you ain't do that right. I know. I know. This is just a really, really quick version. Um, So we were talking a little bit, Nikki, before we left about the pandemic and Mm self-care and moms and women, working women, wives. How do you take the time that you need to make sure you have what you need to be your optimal self, the best version of who you are? Can you talk a little bit about the, the book and how you best see people using that book to get the most out of it so um i think using a book should be a part of your routine some people don't like journaling some people don't really um engage in journaling but it doesn't have to be necessarily an everyday ordeal or something Mm -hmm. of that nature but i do encourage people to have kind of like a nighttime Mm -hmm. wind down routine or some time to yourself i know some moms when they get home, um, and mostly this is for moms who have older kids, but when they first get home, it's like, okay, give me a, give me about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I need to get myself together, and then, you know, I'll come back. Mm-hmm. And so you take that time to kind of decompress and to unwind, and you can add in doing a few of the journal pages mm-hmm. to your routine and getting, you know, getting the thoughts out of your head, Mm -hmm. getting it into your journal and kind of analyzing and looking over some things and making some changes that need to be made. So I think making it a part of your routine Mm -hmm. would definitely help, you know, get you in the routine of doing it and the habit of doing it. Yeah. Got it. So just so you guys are aware, I put some ginger that I grated and put in there. Remember that I didn't grate it. I cut it up. And then I put uh, two cinnamon sticks in there. And so the next thing I'm going to do is just add the hot water. So I'm going to try to pour it on camera, y'all. We're going to see how this goes. This must be a, maybe a hot mess, a literal mm-hmm. hot mess. <laughs> but we're going to go for it. You think you want to try and pour it in? Oh, heck no. Okay. No, ma'am. All right. I'm going to pour it in. Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. Okay. It's a little warm. So we'll be back, you guys. I'm just going to let this sit. I hope you guys can see. It looks really pretty. Like, it's just pretty. the colors already. Like, trying to come down. I hope you can see this gorgeous, jewel tone, red, luscious color. I'm going to start up. Oh, you see that? It's nice and warm. Can y'all see that steam? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to start up for maximum flavor. Now. Mmm, it does smell good. Mm-hmm. It smells real good. So again, this is a traditional holiday drink in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I think this is a drink that I would drink just because. Um, but the the last ingredient that we have, well, there's two more. There's some honey from my garden and some Jamaican rum. And y'all, this is like fresh, local made honey from her garden. I'm a beekeeper. It was my first year beekeeping, and I got honey this year. Um, So we had some trials and tribulations, but I was really, really excited to get it done. Um, And hopefully I'll have some more honey in the spring. So we're doing the bees and the honey again. We are. Part two. And the honey is delicious. I was able to get some 
and it's 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 really really good my husband is a huge fan he likes to use it in sweet tea mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know how much nikki drinks i don't, don't want to say you're lightweight but i don't want to give you too much and a drink jar, I'm using mason jars, you guys. You don't have to use mason jars, but I chose mason jars because I love the color, and I want you to be able to see the color as you drink it, and um, so we can also see how much you want to pour. So I'll start with a little. And we can add ice if you want it cool. Um, and this might be a lot, y'all. I have no idea. <laughs> so we're experimenting. We're experimenting. So I have no clue. You guys might have to do the same, but it's to your liking. And I'm going to do honey, and then I'm going to pour the hot tea in it that will hopefully um, kind of evenly distribute and melt the honey a little. And that might be too much, too, but we'll mm -mm, see. Give me some extra honey. You want I like my tea sweet. <laughs> you tell me when to stop. Okay, that's good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't care what y'all say. This honey is so good. <laughs> now, where can we get a jar like this? So, you honestly, I put a link in the comments. There's a local lady who um, she's a tea maker. She makes her own teas oh, wow. here, um, and she does like medicinal teas for not sleeping, for anxiety. Um, and honestly, she might be a guest that I try to have on the show. She sells them um, in her boutique. She has a boutique store. It was just so cool. I had to buy one. So the only other tidbit I want to say is that, again, we did this after maybe 10 minutes, mm -hmm. maximum 15 minutes of letting it soak. But I do know the traditional making of it has it steep overnight. It sits overnight. But we did this um, in the span of this show. So you, you, you're sipping it. Mm, it has so many notes. It's mm -hmm. like lots of notes, and it's like hitting the back of my throat and everything. So if you're sick, I think this is something you'd want to drink when you're sick. And I think the the, the cinnamon and the ginger kind of gives it that spice mm -hmm. um, that, you know, holiday season is known for. Like, exactly. you know, if you get different candles, it smells cinnamon exactly. or things like that. So I think that's why it's preferred, like a holiday, holiday. drink. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like it. So how did you enjoy the experience of just being in the garden? making it by hand drinking it how did everything come together for so you? i really enjoyed it because like i told you you know i'm like i'm jody's mama from baby boy in my head but in reality mm -hmm. i'm a baby gardener so there is no cutting and doing all of that mm -hmm. just yet mm -hmm. so i really really enjoyed being able to do that and actually see like the fruits of your labor and taste it and things like that so awesome. that was a really pleasant experience um, and then just making it was cool too. Mm -hmm. I like new recipes and I do like cooking. So this was similar to that mm -hmm. and I, I like that. So if this was your first harvest to table experience. Yes. Yay. Yes. So her was. first harvest to table experience was here at Sustenance for the Soul Farm. For those of you who don't know, that's what I call my house. <laughs> I call it Sustenance for the Soul Farm. Um, and I did that because it nourishes me. My garden feeds me, it really mm -hmm. feeds my soul. After I would go from a stressful day, come in the garden, it allowed me to kind of de-stress. Right. And so that's why I called it sustenance for the soul. Like it fed my soul. Um, and I see my house as my sanctuary. So I'm just happy that you had your first harvest to table experience here. And I can't wait for you to have that at your home where you're able to plant something harvest it and enjoy it for you and your family before you leave to talk about how you personally find balance in your life like how do you get the most out of life that you want I am at the stage in my life where I really am not big on doing things that I don't want to do mm -hmm. so I have grown comfortable with saying no now did y'all hear that I just want to make sure people caught that it is okay to say no, yes. especially when you're a giver, mm -hmm. it can be hard to say no, um, but sometimes you have to say no. Yeah, you you, you absolutely have to. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, as with anything, um, there are exceptions to the rules. Mm -hmm. So there are a handful of people who have poured into me and mm -hmm. continue to pour into me. There's nothing that I would not do for those people. But outside of those people... I'm just not doing it. If I don't want to do it, I'm just not doing it. It's just going to be no. As you grow and your interests grow and your entrepreneurial goals grow, you're going to have to say no because mm -hmm. everything can't fit in. Right. Also, if you do feel like you want to seek mental health, 
help. There are various ways that you can do that. You can look online at cliniciansofcolor.org. You can look at therapyforblackgirls.com. You can look at therapyforblackmen.com, um, Psychology Today as well. Um, you can contact, if you're working, your employee or your employer's EAP assistance program. So it's various things out there that can help you. If you're not working and funds are a little tight, because I do know that funds can get tight, um, there are other organizations that can help you as well with, you know, getting the help that you need. So a quick Google search will get you what you need to know. Thank you, Nikki, for providing all those resources. I really hope you take advantage of them. This year, I don't mind sharing, um, the year that I turned 40, I'm the big 4-0, I took the time to invest in my mental health and I started therapy. And to be honest, I wish I had done it sooner. Um, it was a great experience that I recommend to everybody and definitely women of color, um, definitely men of color. Mm -hmm. And because I think in our community, it's still somewhat of a taboo mm -hmm. to say that you participate in therapy, that therapy is a part of your self-care routine, um, but I highly recommend it for everyone. If you haven't done it, please take the time to invest in yourself and your mental health. Well, Nikki, I have enjoyed you yes, so I much. Had a good time. I, you are my first guest. I can't wait to have more guests. Um, but I just thank you for being you. I thank you for being courageous enough to participate um, and be vulnerable on camera. Well, I thank you for inviting me. This was fun. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Please tune in for next episode. Um, we'll see you later.